Good morning, ma'am. Welcome to the Pauline County Board of Commissioners May 8th work session on this another a beautiful, beautiful spring day. Just glad to have everyone here. I do not see any uh, elected officials, so if Brian to bring forward the list for me, please, and silence your cell phones. This time, uh, we're just very uh, pleased to have uh, young Pastor Lee Ridings of Greater Hope Baptist Church to bring us our invitation to the Pledge State of Greater Hope. Father, we love you. God, we're grateful to be here this morning. I'm grateful for what's been represented this morning. And God, I thank you for Mama Ruth. I thank you, God, for what you've done in her life. Lord, I pray, God, that you would keep blessing us with years with her. Uh, God, I, I thank you, Lord, for your son, Jesus. God, I thank you for what you've done in my life, God, and how you changed my life. God, I pray this morning, Lord, that or as we all stand as a group of citizens in this county, God, that we do realize that you are our only hope. God, that you're our only hope for this county. You're our only hope for our families. God, you're our only hope for our souls. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for allowing me to be here. Lord, I pray, God, for our, uh, for our officials in this county. I pray, God, your blessing on them. God, you give them wisdom. I pray, God, that, Lord, that, uh, if one of those officials, God, stands in a place to where, or they don't even know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. I pray, God, that you'd help them, God, to find that knowledge, find the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. God, I pray, Lord, that you would help us as a group of people, God, to lift them up and pray for them. God, that we would lift our, our county high in prayer, God. Lord, as we seek to honor you, God, that we would Make a call, God, back to repentance, back to you, Lord. And Lord, we love you. We thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for the Spirit of God that lives inside of us. And God, thank you for this place. Thank you for what it means. And Lord, thank you for the values of what they have, of what they stand on. And I pray, God, in the coming days, Lord, uh, Lord, that we would keep standing on those values and on those principles. And God, we are most grateful, Lord, for your Son. Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for all that it represents. Uh, Lord, I thank you for my family that's here today in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Lee. The place sounds great with a room full like this today. The uh, minutes from the April 24th, 2018 work session and the April 24th, 2018 board meeting minutes are available for your review. Under our uh, announcements this morning, we always like to start with a positively palding and the um, keep palding uh, beautiful Great American cleanup uh, just happened last weekend, so this is uh, a very new release that belongs to Sheridan. So let's run that. <laughs> Robert with Keep Pauling Beautiful. We are here at Country Creek Park today. We are doing Keep America Beautiful, Great American Cleanup. We are putting out pine straw, we're pulling weeds, and we're picking up trash here at the playground. I'm talking later to the operations manager for the Pauling County Solid Waste Transfer and Recycling Center. We're here this morning for the Great American Cleanup here at Bowman Park, and this is Positive Pauling. I'm Todd County Health Post Food Commissioner. We came out here this morning to help. Uh, we had a ton of volunteers out here this morning. We've done and they picked up a long silver comment. It's, it's great to see the volunteers, and it's great to see the citizens out here using the silver comment trail and the parts that we have. So uh, I thank each and every one of them uh, for making a great day in Paul County. We've got some beautiful parks that we've heard the citizens to take advantage of using our parks, but also be mindful of what you're living. Hey everybody, I'm at the Keep All These Beautiful event today down here in Highland by the Silver Common Trail down by the Woods. I try to participate in this event every year. I think it's a great thing. I love seeing all the volunteers out here. And if you look behind me, there's people like volunteers along with bike riders and trail walkers. 
the trail is beautiful, it's a nice day, and it's just amazing to me how much trash is out here, how much people litter. Everybody listen, don't litter. It doesn't matter if you have a water bottle or a trash, put it in a container. We have plenty of trash containers around here. Please put it in there. Do not clear on the road either. It just makes the county look terrible. And we need to keep this county beautiful. Thank you, and I uh, hope I see you out here next year. Cliff McGrady, Code Enforcement Officer, and also the Secretary for Keep All the Beautiful. We were here on a Great American Cleanup on the Silver County Trail. Oops. We put down 40 bales of stroller, planted 10 hospitals, courtesy of the Pearson Chiropractic and Old Depot. Thank you so much for coming out and being a part. We invite you to our next event, June 2nd, the Shredder event at New Season Church. Bring all your items that need to be shredded to a safe and secure location. Thank you very much, and remember, keep Iron and keep Holy Beautiful. Great job in your leadership there, and uh, there are several board members here. Uh, would all board members stand up and uh, want to keep all the beautiful places? <laughs> now, the board of commissioners would like to uh, present Miss Ruth Ferguson Monk with a proclamation uh, commemorating her 100th birthday. And this is actually uh, going to be done by Uncle uh, Uncle Bull. Uh, also, Lawrence, if he start making his way up here, uh, I'll just read the uh, uh, I'll read the uh, announcement here. Whereas, sorry, here's the proclamation. I'll turn it over to Lauren next, Uncle Bull. Uh, whereas, Ruth. Ferguson Monk, a lifelong resident of Paulding County, was born on May the 17th, 1918, the youngest of seven children to William Noah and Constant Dabbs Ferguson. And whereas Miss Monk was born and grew up on Ferguson Place in the Burnt Hickory community, and 100 years later still owns family property today. And whereas Miss Monk wed Mr. Sharon Lee S.L. Monk on May the 11th, 1935 and together had five children three sons and two daughters and whose families have given her eight grandchildren six great-grandchildren and seven great-great-grandchildren and whereas having lived in Pauling County for a century and been honored with the roads Ferguson Place Dabbs Bridge Road and Johnny Monk Road being named for her family and whereas Miss Monk today celebrates five generations making Paulding County their home. Therefore, I, David L. Carmichael, Chairman of Paulding County Board of Commissioners, do hereby proclaim May 17, 2018, as Ruth Ferguson Monk Day for her faithful service to her family, church, and community in Paulding County. Somebody said uh, the secret to a long life is to live to be a hundred because a very few people die after they reach a hundred years old. <laughs> 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 well,
Our roots, you've got a wonderful family that is represented well. Martin Hickory community is represented well today. I know a lot of you, I've been in jail with some of you. <laughs> As far back as I can remember, I've, I've known of uh, Sharon Monk and, and Ruth Monk and the Monk family, and uh, kind of married into it in a way. Uh, got a lot of relatives. You know, I look around here, married into a Caruth family that's uh, kind of married into it also. It's great, it's great to have you here, and it's great to have the Monk's family here. And I'll bet if I ask anybody to say a few words, that they could, but like I said, we've only got two hours. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get out of here. But it's a privilege for me, uh, Mama Ruth, to just have a small part in this day. We love you. We all love you. Look at the people that showed up, and I believe they showed up more for you than they did for the commissioner. <laughs> we, we do appreciate our commissioners as well. They do a good job. It's not always popular to everybody, but they do the best they can, and let's all pray for them. On May the 11th, 1935, as the commissioner pointed out, she married Sharon Lee S.L. Monk. They were married for 58 years before uh, Sharon passed on March the 13th, 1993. And she said they were parents of five children, two daughters and three sons. Patsy Monk, Sarah Monk Ragsdale, Patsy Monk Morgan, and Sarah Monk Ragdale. Of the three sons, two of them passed away. Boyd died in 1995 and Greg in 2009. Terry is her only living son. Ms. Monk, a homemaker, she loved taking care of her family. She cared for them very well. She not only worked hard raising her children, but she also raised a huge garden every year until 2013. How many of us feel like doing that? <laughs> <laughs> There's no way to count the hours she spent working in the garden. The jars of vegetables she has canned, the jars of jelly she has made, and how many freezers she has filled how much food she raised feed half the Martin Hickory community I mean, giving it away. And having a ear for music, she always loved music, especially gospel and church hymns. Ms. Monk taught herself to play the piano at a young age. And for many years, she played for Martin Hickory Methodist Church, her home church. She also played at Mount Harmony Grove Church in Pauling County, where she is a part owner of that church property there. Now you can hear her play at Kimberly Assisted Living, where she currently resides. Along with being a homemaker, she also supported Mr. Monk in his business until his retirement. He owned and operated S.L. Monk Hauling, based in Atlanta, and Dallas Rock Products, a rock quarry here in Dallas, now the site of the BLD landfill. Deeply rooted in Pauldon County, Mrs. Monk is very proud to have five generations, five generations currently residing here. Of her eight grandchildren, six great-grandchildren and seven great-great-grandchildren only two live outside of Baldwin County. 
But those two definitely consider Baldwin County their own. It's a great honor for me to present to you Ruth Ferguson Monk, known to all that know her as Mama Ruth, who soon will celebrate her 100th birthday. Mama Ruth, it's a privilege for me to stand here and introduce you again to this congregation. Mama Ruth, we love you. Among all the service branches, 
Uh, so when they got to the Governor's Gun Club there, you know, on 278 there in Baldwin County, the uh, sheriff had two uh, vehicles and deputies who gave them uh, an escort all the way up to East Pauling High School. And um, I think my report from Mr. Rollins, whose uh, son Joey is the commander of, of the ROTC unit, and also the star student there, East Pauling, uh, the son of uh, the youngest son of Lee and Lydia Rollins. He, he said the deputies followed them over East Pauling. They all got the high five. It was uh, sound like a good celebration. But, I was already admitted, but this good. Um, <clears throat> so, congratulations, East Pauling High School. <clears throat> Chair Dunham, if you can hear it, thanks so much for that escort. Well, I've gotten a couple of calls this morning. Uh, the kids loved it. It was all about the kids. We honored Greg on the Let's see. Hey, I'd like to make a motion if we could. Uh, there's a lot of folks here for the uh, community cat stuff. And, um, and I'd like to make a motion that we put the invite to that section after the new business uh, to be considered the time for the people who are here for that. Um, okay, we, we have a motion here to re rearrange the schedule, um, which is allowed under our enabling legislation. Um, so is there a second? I'll second. <coughs> Motion by Mr. Davis and a second uh, by Commissioner Collette. Yeah, question, um, do, you, do you have a specific place that you want to put on the agenda? Um, I, was, you say I, was, that. I was just immediately after the uh, new business meeting. We found me. Okay. I, just, I just wanted to give the opportunity. Um, I know some folks had some places to be and they wanted to be here. Uh, as we talk about the uh, community cat thing, I wanted to be considered to their schedule. Okay. Um, would you, would you consider just going to those two new business items about feral cats and then returning to the, the rest of the agenda as printed? Discussion. Um, I'm all for the feral cat, but I'd rather keep the order the same, so uh, I'm going to vote against it. But uh, we'll take the vote this time if there's no other discussion. So, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Nay. Nay. Motion carries 4 1. And we will go to new business item number one, which is discuss action to adopt resolution 18 21. To approve the pilot TNR trap neuter and return program for community cats. And Ms. Kimberly and Chief S and Mr. Baker are going to report on this. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, this is um, carryover from the last meeting. We made a pretty long presentation on the uh, TNR program. And uh, we had mentioned that we were going to come back today with a resolution. I think the skipper's got um, a draft resolution that um, she's going with uh, for it that would allow us to do a 12 month pilot program. And we'd like to uh, ask your consideration on that uh, issue. Uh, this has been a very successful program um, in Cobb County, which is one of our neighbors. Uh, it's also been uh, very successful in other uh, parts of Georgia and in the nation. So. Uh, we would be partnering with Best Friends, which did give a presentation last meeting, uh, and uh, so we're here. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer those. Uh, and also, we have a couple of folks here that, that uh, may be able to answer questions too, if you have anything. Well, I'll just say, Frank, I appreciate the work that you've into this. Uh, we've had support here on the board for, um, for doing this and getting get direction and getting moving. Uh, and Lonnie and, and Chief Hess also. Involved heavily in that, and so I appreciate the work that goes into that. I was thinking about this 
a little bit. It's kind of yesterday leading up into today. We need to do, uh, we need to be involved in a lot of stuff in our community uh, as commissioners, and I think that uh, this is going to be one of those things that I look back on that I'm happy to be a part of. Um, I think it's a long time coming. I asked for two weeks between the presentation and this meeting so that um, we could hear from the people, and, um, and, and I wasn't sure the response I was going to get, um, but all of the people who reached out to me uh, by email or phone <laughs> grabbing me up at Walmart and talking to me. Um, all very supportive of this. And uh, and so I'm excited to be a part of this. I look forward to seeing, coming back in the year and seeing the results. And I expect the results will um, speak for themselves in the next, in the next 12 months. Well, thank you. I want to also uh, mention Ms. Culberson from Animal Control. She's been on board with us. And, and you mentioned Chief Hess. But also, uh, Commissioner Collette, um, he, he and I spoke, uh, I hadn't, hadn't even been uh, moved over from the from the Superior Court very long, and we were talking about it, and uh, we got hooked up with, uh, with the folks at Cobb, and they got us hooked up with best friends, and uh, the rest is history. So I know it's something that he's been working on a long time to get, get that done. But uh, we feel really, really good about the program, and we think we're going to be able to show some results um, pretty quickly, uh, according to the data that we've looked at. So we feel really positive. And thank you, Frank. I tell you, it would not have happened without you, and I appreciate you coming in and taking us to Cobb County. If you would not have done that, we never would have met Best Friends, and I appreciate Best Friends. I see they're here today. Uh, thank you. I'm excited about this. And Frank, I'd like to take credit for trying to get Mandy and all her friends off my back. <laughs> <laughs> and, and if I could, I would like to thank Mandy, too. Uh, uh, she uh, she reached out to me uh, back in December, I think it was. And, she sent me some data, and uh, I, I, after I read the, read the stuff and, and did a little research, I was convinced that we needed to, to be moving in that direction. And I want to thank uh, the folks at Best Friends. And I apologize I didn't see you guys earlier. And do you all have any questions for Carrie from Best Friends before uh, we conclude? No, I'd just like to thank Mandy for all the years hanging in there and uh, all your support team behind you. <coughs> I think uh, this is going to be great. And it's just a community working together for something positive, and uh, I'm excited about it. So it just shows, just goes to show you, uh, you're steadfast, you know, hanging in there with us. And like Brian said, on our backs, uh, we we do appreciate it. I appreciate you putting up the fight and uh, getting us to this point. So we're excited about it, and I appreciate everybody's had a part in it. Uh, thank you. And now I'd like to say thank you to you. I know that <clears throat> you've been tenacious. You have really wore us out, and sometimes I really didn't want to hear from you. <laughs> it's a, you have done a great job being persistent and pushing forward. And I, I'm sure if a little old cat could say something, they'd say thank you. <laughs> good thank you. Stand my thanks, Rudy. Really. Business number two is discuss action to adopt resolution 18-22, adopting amendments uh, to the ordinance of Pauling County Georgia, amending the Pauling County Animal Control Ordinance. Uh, so, Ms. Skipper and Chief Hess, uh, and just say in preface, Ms. Skipper didn't just take uh, the parts of the ordinance that pertain to cats, but uh, just combed and scrubbed the whole uh, ordinance, so um, that's great. And I wanted to say this is actually a joint effort between Ms. Culberson, Chief Hess, and myself. Um, we did make several changes to the ordinances, so I was going to run through those with y'all. We changed the abandonment of an animal ordinance um, to include some of the situations that we've had, um, but to exclude the community cat issue. Um, we added the definitions for community cat and community cat caregiver that would go with this program. And for an ear-tipped cat, which is part of the program where they're going to uh, tip off a little quarter of the ear to show that that cat's already been through the shelter, been uh, through the neutering, the TNR process. Um, we changed the definition of owner um, because our last one had been confusing for people um, because it involved that three-day requirement for feeding an animal. So we changed it to 
owner means any person owning, possessing, harboring, keeping, or having custody or control of an animal subject to this chapter. This definition is intended to include any person that is the custodian of an animal, provided, however, an owner does not include a community caregiver. caregiver. Um, we talked about the, changing the definition to shelter um, for what's adequate shelter for an animal, and we've gone through that at, at length. Um, so that's a much longer definition than it used to be. Um, same with space or adequate space for an animal. That one has also um, gotten to be more explicit, explained better. And that just comes from some of the issues we've had in court with people not understanding what sheltering an animal means and what they need to have. Um, we added definitions for trap, neuter, vaccinate, return, and also the shelter, uh, neuter, vaccinate, return. Um, let's see, we changed the vicious animal definition to include anim an animal is also considered to be vicious if it makes an unprovoked attack on people, other animals, or on the physical property, uh, on or off its pro owner's property, meaning that they're attacking even if it's within their owner's front yard, it still can be considered vicious. Um, we changed the definition for right of entry for the animal control officers, so that there's not question about the fact that they can rescue an animal that's in inhumane conditions. Um, let's see. And you would think I'd have to change this section, but we have, under the ordinance, we have first, second, and third offenses. So we have made it clear that an additional offense past the third offense is considered another third offense. Um, so you don't start over in the ordinance process. It's first, second, third, and then it's continual third offenses. So that's the, the highest amount that can be charged by the magistrate court. Um, one of the biggest changes in the ordinance, other than applying a community cat caregiver and community cats throughout the sections where it matters, is we change the ordinance, which is section 14-15, about animal noises and barking, and how that complaint process works. And we also included a barking dog complaint form that you could that is used in other jurisdictions that we thought would make that process more streamlined and better understood by the basic public. Um, one of the things that's going to be required in order to have a noise complaint based upon an animal now is that there has to be two witnesses that are willing to come to court and testify. Which, if you make the complaint and the animal control officer hasn't heard it or seen it, we need the witnesses to come. And so they have to be willing to do that. They're signing that they're willing to do that. Um, let's see. Those are the basic changes other than incorporating the trap and release into the rest of it. Um, and again, I'd like to thank Eileen Culberson for all the work that she's done on this as well. Um, and she really has worked hard on it, the same she has. Yeah, questions? Comments, concerns? Thank you. Thanks for your work on it. Thank you. Please, everybody. Okay, we'll uh, move back to uh, invited guests at this time. Um, Due to the expressed interest in the history of the airport on the April 24th meeting, um, I invited the uh, airport director and airport authority CEO, uh, Mr. Terry Tibbetts, to uh, come this morning to kind of balance out the discussion that we had. I wanted to give uh, a little information about uh, Mr. Tibbetts, um, the CEO of the Pauling County Airport Authority. He was born and raised right here in Pauling County. His, uh, Dad, Ed, uh, with his Korea veteran cats, usually sitting in the back of this scene this morning. And uh, Catherine, his mom, uh, raised their family here. He graduated from Pauling County High School in 1975, in the top five in his class. Then he went on to Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech, uh, he graduated with a degree in electrical engineering in 1979. Uh, he went to work for GTRI, which is the Georgia Tech Research Institute. Uh, and uh, while he was working, he achieved his master's degree uh, also in electrical engineering, and he progressed to the Georgia Tech uh, Research Institute's uh, lab director, the largest lab that Georgia Tech has. Uh, and during his service there in the career, he uh, had over 400 engineers who called him their boss. 
Uh, Terry's a pilot also. He's an aircraft uh, mechanic. Uh, his FAA degrees, Federal Aviation Administration degrees, include a multi-engine rating, a commercial and instrument rating. On the maintenance side is A&P, which is airframes and power plants. Uh, and he, he got his AVMT, Aviation Maintenance Tech degree from uh, Clayton State University. He's married to Sheila with uh, one son and two daughters. Uh, one stepdaughter and uh, two grandchildren. Goes to church all the way up in Blairsville, Georgia, and has uh, done mission trips regularly uh, internationally. So um, it's a privilege to have Terry here with us to uh, inform us some more about the discussion on airport history. Thank you, gentlemen, and Miss Skipper. <clears throat> Appreciate the introduction. That was not really necessary. But I would add to it that I was happily retired until I was called into this position at the airport. <laughs> Look forward to going back someday to being happily retired. But at the present time, it's my duty and my responsibility to represent the airport, represent um, the Paulding County Airport Authority as their CEO. And as you know, at your last meeting, uh, there was a last minute agenda item uh, put on the agenda to address the history of the airport and we feel that it's important uh, for there to be a balanced uh, presentation made on that topic. Uh, I know that you're going to disagree with a lot of that I have to say, but it is very complicated, complex, uh, and often involving uh, hard legal issues. And what I want to do is simply present an alternative view of our view from the Paulding County Airport perspective of the history of the airport, especially the history of the airport over the last four years. I first want to bring up an issue that seems to be a reoccurring theme in the public um, by statements that are made by most of you in the recent months, and that is the topic of broken promises. Promises are important, and how well we keep our promises goes a long ways in determining how those around us determine our honesty and our integrity. I agree that promises are important, but I submit to you that our written words are equally important and our written words, once agreed upon and signed, become known as contracts. Contracts are just a, a more formal way of memorializing promises that we make to each other. And it's also how promises are made and documented between businesses and governmental agencies. At the heart of the dispute between the Baldwin County Airport Authority and the Board of Commissioners is a contract known as the Intergovernmental Agreement. That's this agreement. The Intergovernmental Agreement was signed between the Paulding County Airport Authority uh, and an outgoing Board of Commissioners in 2014. Mr. Crow, you have characterized this contract as tying your hands, and that is true. We call contracts binding because contracts bind us. They, they tie our hands, and they are the commitment that is represented uh, between those parties agreeing to those contracts. You've also characterized this contract as being signed by an outgoing board. In political terms, we refer to that as a lame duck um, political group. And that is also true. And we agree that it was a lame duck and outgoing uh, board of commissioners who negotiated with the airport authority and signed that contract. But surely you'll agree that at some point in your career, each of you as politicians will become known as lame duck politicians. But you were elected to serve full terms. You are not elected to step down immediately upon the election of your replacement. You serve full terms. Votes and actions taken on your last day in office are just as legally binding as votes and actions taken on your first day in office. The laws of this country also do not allow the flexibility for us to decide what contracts we like and what contracts we don't like. But rather, the laws of this land require that all contracts be carried out to their fullest extent, and failure to do so is in effect a broken promise. In legal terms, we call that a breach of contract. Now at your last meeting, your attorney put forward a theory that all of our problems surrounding the Fulton County Airport began after Resolution 1501, and you blame the Fulton County Airport Authority for being the root cause of these problems because we submitted a letter to the FAA asserting our rights that we believe were granted under the Intergovernmental Agreement. 
we're not aware of any legal action that the Board of Commissioners have taken to attempt to declare the intergovernmental agreement invalid, and we object to your apparent position that you alone have the authority to totally ignore aspects of this contract that you don't like, that you consider to be unnecessarily binding, or that were done by a board in its last days in office. Effectively allowing yourselves the freedom to break any promises that you don't agree with. And we object to that, quite frankly. Our board respectfully rejects that you have this authority, and it is our opinion that any promise broken, including those in contractual documents that bind us together as governmental entities and governmental entities dealing with private companies, is just that. It's a promise broken. So let's look back at some of the promises that we would argue you have broken. In this IGA, I'll refer you to Section 5H. 5H is the, the section that has been before this board numerous times in the past, and it's the section that requires the transfer of the property uh, known as the 163 acres. It's a written promise by your board to our board to effect this transfer. And this transfer um, was blocked effectively by the Paulding County Board of Commissioners because you refused to go to the, uh, to the FAA and effect this transfer. The problem with that for us, as you know, is that we also have this contract with Silver Comet Terminal Partners. This contract was an agreement, a promise, whereby we agreed to lease to Silver Comet Terminal Partners 60 acres of property uh, for purposes of, of business operations that they might want to do. And 40 acres of that property lies on the 163 acres at the heart of the dispute. And so your failure to honor your promise, your commitment to effect that transfer resulted in our failure to be able to, uh, to complete the promise that we had made to Silver Common. And we knew that this document was coming. This document is a document from Silver Comet Terminal Partners to the Paulding County Airport Authority in which they notify us that they intend to exercise their option to lease one acre of property that happens to be in the middle of detention pond number three. It's an unbuildable piece of property, but it has the distinction of being in the middle of the 163 acre track that was at the heart of the dispute in our dispute with you. In other words, this was a legal mess. Now, we knew this document was coming. We knew this lawsuit was coming. Uh, and we had made repeated attempts. Uh, I personally appeared before you behind this very podium prior to all of this with a resolution from my board urging that you complete the transfer of the property. Um, but you didn't do it. And the reason you didn't do it is because you claimed that you never had approval from the FAA, which is true. But the reason you never had permission from the FAA is because you never asked for it. Mr. Pownell, um, Mr. Carmichael, we all remember in uh, June of last year, July of last year, we met with the FAA on this very topic. And Larry Clark, who's the Director of Airports for Georgia and a couple of other states, in a meeting with Mr. Stephen Hicks, who's the Director of Airports for all of the Southeastern United States, emphatically pointed out to us that they could care less who owned the property. What was important was that we agree. They required that we agree on the ownership of the property. Now we contend that we do agree because we have this intergovernmental agreement, which is an agreement, it is a contract, in which we have agreed on the ownership of that pro property. So let's, let's fast forward to where we are today. This is the deed that was uh, in much controversy, signed by uh, Chairman Carmichael's predecessor, Mr. David Austin, on his last day in office. And this deed is now recorded as a legal deed over in the Paulding County records. We have negotiated and had approved by the FAA this document, which is a joint corrective action plan, which addresses the long-term uh, ownership of the property and ensures that we can keep that 40 acres at the heart of the, uh, of the issue here. Uh, which is the only 40 acres we ever really cared about because we had made promises to Silver Comet and we were getting ready to be sued by Silver Comet and it was necessary for us to, 
take action to, to take ownership of this property. The FAA has agreed, and y'all have correctly negotiated, a long-term settlement for the property dispute. So we've arrived at a good solution. The problem with arriving at that, that good solution is that if you had just kept your promise in the first place, we could have avoided the embarrassment, the cost, the expense that went along with having to uh, finagle through the legal system and through, um, through sheer determination and hard work to make this happen so that we could protect this county from a lawsuit that we all knew was coming. And if you had just kept your promise and done the transfer as was required, we believe, our position, is that it was required by the intergovernmental agreement, which was a properly negotiated, um, properly debated, publicly introduced, and signed document by two governmental boards, one to the other, that could have been avoided. Next, let's talk about the lawsuit between the Paulding County Airport Authority and the Board of Commissioners. That's, uh, that's this lawsuit. And this lawsuit, uh, it's proposed uh, by some in public that the reason for the lawsuit is so that you can recover the bond payments. In fact, when you sit down and read the, the lawsuit itself, you find out that there are multiple claims and multiple counts published in this one lawsuit. It's not a simple lawsuit, um, and it involves three parties. It involves us, Silver Comet, and you, the Board of Commissioners. But the claim that the Board of Commissioners has against the Paulding County Airport Authority is the claim that Blake Swafford, who was then a county employee, did not have the authority to sign and submit the application for the 139 uh, changeover at the Paulding County Airport. It has nothing to do with the bonds. And your attorney said that he was unaware of any direction that ties our hands going forward on that topic, and I guess he hasn't read this letter, I'll read just one paragraph, it says, please consider this letter as notice. This is from the FAA. Um, and it says, please consider this letter as notice going forward that the FAA will respond only to joint communications submitted on our behalf of both co-sponsors. In other words, the FAA has said, we either get along or we're not moving forward. That's, that's where we stand today. Effectively being an injunction against moving forward with the 139 application. Effectively making the, the issue of whether the application that was submitted is an active application or not. Yes, the FAA technically today remains behind the statement that they published uh, several years ago in which they say that application remains active until all current and future litigation surrounding that application has been resolved. That's step one. Step two then would become, okay, now we've resolved the litigation, what do the two co-sponsors want to do? The two co-sponsors must speak with one voice. The FAA was very clear on that, on the issue of the 163 acres. They have been very clear on this. And it effectively amounts to what you are asking for in the lawsuit against us, which is an injunction against moving forward with the 139. The issue of the bond payments is an issue between you and Silver Comet Terminal Partners. You have sued Silver Comet Terminal Partners for payment of the bonds. One might ask, well, why is Silver Comet Terminal Partners not making the bond payments? I didn't hear that discussed at the last meeting. The reason is because we didn't just sell bonds and throw the money in the street and Silver Comet agreed to pay it back. We sold the bonds to pay for a, for a project, a construction project, the widening and the lengthening of Taxiway Alpha. That project remains uncompleted today. In other words, we, Paulding County, never delivered to Silver Comet what they had contracted for in that bond agreement. So they have presented the argument that they don't owe the bonds because they never received the product for which the bonds were to pay for. That's a legal question. And what we have said is that that question needs to be resolved by attorneys and judges. We don't need to be a part of that because in your very lawsuit, you assert correctly 
that you have the right, because you are co-signers on, on that bond, to step in our stead and sue any third party to, to make the county whole on that. We're out of the way on that. We're not interfering with that. But we hold that you could dismiss the Paulding County Airport Authority from that lawsuit and thus end this image that we are that county in Georgia that is suing itself. We see no point in continuing to press ahead with a lawsuit um, which is over the question of whether or not the 139 application is valid when the FAA has made it clear that they will not proceed until we are in agreement. Okay, the City of Atlanta lawsuit. That's this lawsuit. And in this lawsuit, we're actually in agreement with what you have presented over in the courtroom across the parking lot. Let me just read three of the eight defenses. I see your attorney just walked in the room. He'll be very familiar with these words. You have claimed eight defenses against that lawsuit. Three of them are that it's uh, beyond the statute of limitations. We agree with that. Um, that it's barred in whole or in part by the statute of frauds. Uh, the statute of frauds is uh, summarized in this piece of paper, which basically says in the state of Georgia, Deeds must be rendered into writing. Verbal promises made prior to the signing of a deed that are not then rendered into writing in the deed carry no legal weight. And then finally, you say that it's the result of the city of Atlanta's own action, inaction, conduct, um, poor business decisions, or neglect. We agree with that. So, uh, Commissioner Crow, in this room, in the court of public opinion, you say that you side with the city of Atlanta, that we made a commitment to them, we made a promise to them not to commercialize the airport, and you intend to honor that commitment. But across the parking lot in the court of law, your attorney who is speaking on your behalf says that the city of Atlanta lawsuit, in fact, has no merit. We agree with that, and we believe that that lawsuit should be allowed to carry forward to completion to protect the rights of the citizens of Paulding County that we bought and paid for when we purchased that land. And here's the deed for that property. And the deed for that property contains no deed restrictions. So we believe that the City of Atlanta lawsuit is without merit. You, speaking through uh, your attorney in a court of law, have expressed absolute agreement with us on that and we believe that that should play through to completion. Finally, let's consider a promise made in paragraph 4A of the Intergovernmental Agreement. It says the authority shall operate and maintain the airport. We believe that that's a commitment that your board, granted speaking through a, a previous version of your board, immoralized through a document called an intergovernmental agreement, which is one of the few ways that a government body can be bound over from one makeup of the board to the next. But a legal document nonetheless. In that legal document, we believe that paragraph 4A says that the airport authority shall operate and maintain the airport. That's a pretty simple promise. But it's our position that Resolution 1501 violates this written promise by attempting to take back over the management and the control of the Paulding County Airport and assert your view, your vision, of how the airport should move forward and ignoring our view and our vision of how the airport should be properly maintained and operated, which we believe we have a contract and promise from your board to our board to do. And we respectfully disagree that you have the self-appointed power to determine what promises to ignore and what promises to keep. We don't deny that you don't like this promise. We don't deny that you disagree personally over this promise. We don't deny that it tied your hands by a previous board. What we do deny was that it was illegally done. We deny that there was anything improper about the way that document, the intergovernmental agreement, was done. So we believe that the, the problems with Paulton County Airport 
and our interaction as Paulding County Airport Authority with your board began with your very first resolution, your very first act in 2015. It's called Resolution 1501, in which you moved to seek control of the airport management and operation back from the Paulding County Airport by sending a copy of that resolution to the FAA and, and uh, voicing your disagreement over the way we were managing the airport, effectively saying you, the Paulding County Board of Commissioners, no longer support the, um, uh, the commercialization of the airport. We don't disagree that you've got that right. We don't disagree that you've got a right to even publicly state that you are opposed to the commercialization of Paulding County Airport. We do, however, believe that you must honor the written commitments and the promises made in signed contracts between us. Let me go one step further. All of you, uh, all of you post commissioners have publicly said all of your problems go away if that Paulding County Airport Authority would simply withdraw the 139 application. The problem with that is we have a signed contract which binds our hands. It's a promise we made to Silver Comet Terminal Partners, a legitimate business in the United States of America, who signed a contract, a binding contract with us, in which we agreed to submit a 139 application and use our best efforts to see to it that that application was approved. And that's exactly what we have done. But you have called on us to simply withdraw that application. Gentlemen, that would be a breach of contract. That would be us breaking a promise that we've made to a business in which we have a legally binding contract with. We, the airport authority, see nothing honorable in taking a dishonorable step of choosing unilaterally on our own that we may break a promise that we have made to a business that entered into a contract with us. In summary, gentlemen, I urge you to end this practice of believing that you alone have the authority to determine which promises are worthy to be kept and which promises can simply be cast aside as invalid and instead govern with the integrity to hold all promises made by your board, current and past, that are legitimately binding promises, such promises as deeds, such promises as intergovernmental agreements, and we hold that there is at least an alternative view to the view that y'all posed uh, at your last meeting with us not in the room, that we're at fault, that we, the Paulding County Airport Authority, is at fault for all of the problems that have led to the four years of infighting that we have witnessed between our board and your board. And we respectfully project to you that there is an alternative view that should be considered and as with all complex issues and discussions of this sort, there are some things upon which I am wrong. There are some things upon which you are wrong. That's why we should sit down and negotiate like we did over the Joint Corrective Action Plan. That was a negotiated settlement. No judge got in the middle of our Joint Corrective Action Plan, which has now resulted in a peaceful solution to the 163-acre issue that the FAA has sanctioned, has approved, and we're both happy with, and we're moving forward with. We believe, we present to you, that we, as grown-ups, should be able to sit down in the room without the attorneys, without the judges, without spending hundreds of thousands of dollars, and work through these issues that we have. But it must begin with a commitment that we will at least start with the premise that a promise broken is a promise broken, and that a contract is a legally binding promise that one board makes to another, and that one governmental entity makes to a private company. And if we start with that as our fundamental foundation, we can then negotiate from that. We can change these contracts. We can tear up the intergovernmental agreement if we do it together in the name of negotiation. But we can't unilaterally ignore the binding requirements of these contracts. We, the airport authority, cannot unilaterally 
withdraw the 139 application just to make your life easier. Because we made a promise that we intend to keep, that we are contractually bound to follow. Gentlemen, I'll be happy to address anything that you think would be profitable for the citizens of Paulding County to hear. I'll answer any questions that you've got. But I thank you for this opportunity to present what we believe is an alternative view to those views expressed at your last meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tibbs. <coughs> First of all, I might say two things. One is, uh, it wasn't put on the last minute. I put it on early Friday morning. Got a phone call from, and it was on there all weekend. Got a phone call from the chairman Monday morning said he was taking it off. He could have easily had you come last meeting. Uh, I wasn't trying to keep you from being here or any other imposed, uh, the opposing side is free. But he did take it off. Okay, so I put it back on. Now, this wasn't put on the original agenda either. The chairman put this on after 5 o'clock on Friday. Negative, I, negative, I, negative. I did not get the first resolution draft until after 5 o'clock. <coughs> it was on there. It was put on Friday. Okay, regardless, it was put on Friday. Let's put it that way, okay? I think after 5 o'clock it was put on Friday. So I don't see any different than what I did and what he did. So you're saying he put it on the last minute also? I can't I speak to the issues fine. that you have internally to your board. I'm here to address the issue that you said that it was a last minute thing. It was not. It was plenty of time for both sides to prepare. Second, I think you credited Tony Crow with the comment I made. I don't want you to do that, okay? I don't think you made that comment about um, about the um, something about the airport. I didn't write it down. About the idea, I think I made that comment. I'm pretty sure I did. Uh, but I do have a, a few more questions. One is uh, the IGA. Nobody uh, said the IGA was done illegally. I've never said that comment. Uh, the thing I said that was done inappropriately in, in violation of the Sunshine Laws was when they met in Douglas County and signed a contract with Brett Smith. That was. Now, you can argue with me if you want to, but their own attorney, Tom Cable, in court said, yes, they probably did break the Sunshine Law, but there's nothing you can do about it because too much time has passed. Their you want to take these comments one at a time, or you want well, to wait I'm not asking you to respond to them. Don't know that I want to respond to them. I'm just making comments. I'm sure you don't. <laughs> Okay, okay, are you saying that the contract was signed in Douglas County? I'm not saying the contract. As a matter of fact, that's another issue. I don't know if the contract was ever voted on the sign. It had a different name than it was voted on. But you said that we violated the Sunshine Law by going to Douglas County. Tom Cable said that. Well, you just, repeated that repeat you, you just repeated that we violated the Sunshine Law by going to Douglas County and signing a contract with Silver Comet. We did not sign a contract. I didn't in Silver Comet. Okay, then, then we're in agreement. We did not sign a contract in but, Douglas but, County. But the, the only meeting that I'm aware of for which an issue has been raised about uh, Sunshine Law violations was that meeting in Douglas County. Do you agree? I do agree. Okay, and, you're so that was, and so that was a meeting in which there was a disagreement over how the minutes were handled, which we have agreed were not done correctly, and how the announcement was made. But we also agreed that what that meeting was, was an informative meeting where the FAA was, was informing us on what did it mean to have a 139 application, and there were no votes taken and no action taken. So yes, we agree there were technical violations, but we don't agree that that had anything to do with the Brett Smith contract with Silver Comet Terminal Partners. That came at a different time. I agree with that, but okay. what I'm saying is one thing I've ever said was done wrong was probably that discussion you had in Douglas County. And, and we've not attorney, disagreed with that. And your own attorney said that. And, and okay. we've not disagreed with that. The same, in fact, courtroom, Judge Brandon said that Blake Swamper did not have the authority to sign that 139 application. He did go on to say he's going to let it stand. Now, I don't know why he would let it stand, stand if he didn't have the authority, but that's what should happen. That's what took place. Okay, and it needs to be known that people said that. Okay, uh, so let's, let's stay on that. Point. Okay. So are you saying that the 139 application stands today based on the document that I just read that the FAA going forward will only take input from us as joint co-sponsors? Correct. Okay. So why are you suing us? To prove 
to prove that that application was done improperly? And what do you win Why if you win? not want to sue to collect the money that Brett Smith owes? That's a totally different claim. It's part of that suit. We have not said it's, it's only a part of the suit. It's part of it, though. No, it's not. It is. The lawsuit against the Paulding County Airport Authority is over the issue of whether Blake Swafford had the authority to sign the 139. The claim on the bond payment is a claim to Silver Comet Terminal Partners, and we're silent on that. If you want to go uh, sue Silver Comet over the bond payment, that's between you and Silver Comet. We do not need to be a party of that because in the lawsuit itself, you correctly assert that the bond agreement that, that we all signed when we sold the bonds gives you the authority to step in in our stead and sue any third party to collect harm and damages that you believe have been made to the county. We've not disputed that. So you can sue Silver Comet. You don't need us involved. I'm with you. There's your I'm attorney. With you. He can I'm answer. I'm with you. Attorney address that. All right. But also, a uh, comment was made that um, the land transfer, you know, the were in violation of not transferring the land. I disagree with that totally. When was the land transfer? When was the IDA signed? It was signed in, uh, the amendment was signed, I believe, in November of 2014. Why didn't that board do it? Because there was no time between 2014 and between November and January of 2014 to get it done. Sure there was. Well, they believe there was. Again, they, that's, they, that's an they, issue they, for y'all's board, not for us. David Austin could have done it in the last day of the board, year. They, they, were, they were waiting. Okay. They would, I served two years with David Austin, and he could have done it any time then. I served two years with Carmine. So why did it, it not happen? Ask them. They the ones I'm trying to mention you. The reason it didn't happen is they I can tell you because it. the FAA never approved it. Well, I'll tell you another reason that I believe was one reason that it never got signed because they knew the day it got signed, we were going to get sued by the city of Atlanta. And when it did get signed, that's exactly what happened. And so let the city of Atlanta sue. We'll go settle that in court. It's, well, then they could have done it a lot sooner. It's, it's a frivolous lawsuit. It's an action that we have to take in order to, it's an action we have to take in order to protect the rights of the citizens of this county. But the 163-acre transfer did not occur because y'all never went to the FAA and said that you concurred with the transfer. Why didn't the other board? Why didn't these guys? I don't control the agenda. It's because they ran out of time. The clock expired before they got it done. I served with that bond for two years. Yeah, that time. clock was only two months long. It was from November to December. He had plenty of time to do it. He could have done it. I disagree with that. He could have done it. Don't Mr. Cormack, okay. Done All right. We'll respectfully disagree with that. I've got two more questions for you. One is, do you know why the airport was built? Yes, I do. Why? It was built as a general aviation airport. Thank you. And let me ask you another question. Were you uh, hired to make it a successful general, general aviation airport or to make it a successful commercial airport? I was hired to make it a successful airport. Thank you. Airport. 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 Any other questions? Terry, when you, when you came out there, you, you called each one of us individually. Yes, sir, I did. And you, we, you know, you were the first time that anybody has called me and asked me to come out and sit down and let's talk. And I felt like you were open arming me and I was you. I agree. And I was within the hopes at that time that we would see eye to eye. You made a couple of statements to me and you correct me if I'm wrong. You said, Tony, I know I'm not elected. I'm out here for this. And I know you are elected. And I hear what the people are saying. And I understand. I said that. Yes, sir. And when we parted ways, I called other commissioners and I was delighted with our conversation. And I thought, we got somebody here that's going to work with us. And, and, and you, you explained to me when that contract run out, we'd be done with this match. And uh, I hope you're not too disappointed in me. And sometimes I'm disappointed in you, and you probably don't me. But I'm, I got one statement to make to the public to all this concern. And I quoted it before, William Penn once wrote, right is right, even when all support it, I mean, they were against it, and wrong is wrong, even when all are for it. And you know, we can agree to disagree on a lot of things you said today. You articulated well, and I appreciate you being here, I really do, because everybody needs to hear, but it don't mean that something's right when it's wrong. That's all I want to say about it. Okay. Let me say something then about 
about those meetings that we had. I sat down with each one of y'all within probably two or three weeks of having been hired. And I asked each one of y'all to work with me on general aviation topics. And I believe what I said to you was, we'll let the courts resolve commercialization. Let's work together on general aviation topics. I remain committed to working with you on general aviation topics. Gentlemen, we have a half-finished corporate hangar. We have a roadway extension called the Airport Parkway Roadway Extension that the state of Georgia has offered us $3 million to build the road so that we can access an industrial park that's already been bought and paid for by the IGA. We have a project called the Terminal Area Expansion Project, which is a general aviation project to add additional ramp space, roadways, uh, hangars, uh, growth space for that airport so that we can expand that airport and the general aviation footprint of that airport so that we have a product to offer to the general aviation public. We have businesses that contact me on a regular basis and they want to ask questions like what kind of support do you get from your elected officials? What kind of abatements might be available uh, for, for our uh, business that we might want to bring there? What kind of environment is there that exists between your industrial building authority and your airport authority and your board of commissioners? And right now, that's not a pretty story to tell. I urge you, I urge you to work with us on general aviation topics, on all of these things that I just addressed, the building of the fence, the, um, the, the keeping of the grounds. When I need something from the Paulding County uh, departments who support other things in Paulding County. Uh, I've got a broken down truck. I'd love to carry it to the transportation department and get them to fix it for me. But right now they're afraid to touch it because of the toxicity that exists between the airport and the county. I'd love to see a resolution passed that y'all said we authorize every county entity, every county department to work openly and fully and aggressively for the support of the airport and the general aviation advancement of that airport so that I can get the kind of support that we need in this county to take this beautiful asset that is a uh, just an absolute gift to us that we have, but it has been uh, it has been kept under a basket and not allowed to thrive. And we can do better than that. And so I look forward to y'all actually putting words or actions to those words and rolling up your sleeves and getting out there with me and let's get that hangar finished. Let's get those roads built. Let's get that industrial park open. Let's get that terminal area expansion project finished. Let's get that fence put up and let's work together on those things that we absolutely agree on and move this airport forward while we wait for the courts to resolve the issues over commercialization. But I urge you, start with ending the lawsuit to us, which is consuming the vast majority of my time, and keeping my hands tied that I can't invest in the general aviation activities at that airport, because I've got lawyers that I've got to pay. I've got court cases that I have to go service. And one of those is one that you absolutely control. You could make a motion right now today to instruct your attorney who's sitting right here end the lawsuit against the Paulding County Airport Authority, but keep the lawsuit, if you choose, in place to Silver Comet. Keep the lawsuit in place, please, to the city of Atlanta, and let's work together to protect the rights of the citizens of this county but let's move forward and join arm in arm and end the lawsuit of Paulding County suing Paulding County. That serves no useful good. Mr. Tibbetts, is the airport a department of the county? Today, no. So you want us to treat you like a department? Absolutely. But we can't. Because, because, we, not. because we are co-sponsors. So if you want to give the airport back, maybe we'll talk. I mean, we can treat it like a department. We'll give you back the the whole airport back because Todd, 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 Poundell, Todd Poundell was sitting right there in the room when Stephen Hicks and Larry Clark said to him, we don't care who owns the property. It's an airport. 
and the airport has two co-sponsors. One of them is you. If you want the land, we'll give you every inch of it if you'll work with us and honor the contracts that we have in place. We have worked with you as far as general aviation. I'll continue to, and I'll say something about that in a minute. But also, you made a comment that uh, that you felt like we wanted to break the contract with Red Smith. I don't want you to break the contract. Whoever it's with Silver Comet Partners, Terminal Partners, I don't want you to break that. But we sat down last year in Tally Richardson and Cable's office and we had a mediation. I thought it was going really well. And that was a mediation where Red Smith wanted out. Red Smith was willing to deal with the contract. I left there thinking there was going to be a second meeting, which never took place. It wasn't because of us. I was more than willing to do that second meeting. What happened right after that second, that first meeting, though, was the depositions came from Silver Tongue. Not from us. So are you blinding us? No, but I'm just, saying, I'm just saying don't So what's, what's the purpose in bringing that up? The purpose, because people need to know the whole truth and all the truth, and you're sitting here saying that we want to break that promise. I don't ask you to break that promise or that contract. So, so you're saying, saying you have not asked us to continue. withdraw that 139 application? If we would continue, okay, if we would continue to have negotiated, we may not be in this position today. I don't disagree with that, but it wasn't me that broke off the negotiation. No, I'm not saying it was. Okay, I mean, so I, I want to be very clear. Do you ask that the Paulding County Airport Authority today withdraw the application for the 139 certification? We've got a, a thing from the Department of Justice saying we got to mediate this thing. I think we can move forward with mediation. I'm Here. asking Here. because you, you said in the debates, you said all the Paulding County Airport Authority has to do is withdraw that application and this all goes if away. If you let him know you wanted to withdraw, we could negotiate with him together. Are you, are you asking us to break that contract today? You are discussing the attorney client privilege okay. information. Sorry. You have an attorney in the room. Okay. I'll let the attorney address it. Any other questions for me? I'm going to make, no. I'm going to make a couple statements. You, you're going to ask me a question? I'm going to make a couple statements. So you don't need no, Mr. Tibbetts. All right, I'll sit down. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not going to make as many statements as I'd like to make. Sometimes the whole story is not told. You want to talk about technology part you can dress it up by calling it technology you can it can be an industrial park out the airport like i said you can dress it up by calling it technology park you want to talk about the two grants that equal close to three million dollars but what you don't want to talk about is if we microphones they're, they're off what you don't want to talk about is that if we accept the $3 million in grants, there's somewhere around $3 million we've got to put in it to complete that project. It's not just about accepting the grants. And sometimes when you accept a grant, it can cost you more to do a project than what it would if you didn't have the grant. But if we accept those two grants and we do that project, We've got to find three million dollars to put into it. If y'all want to help us find the three million dollars, that'd be great. But it's not just that. You want to talk about so helping, I guess, pay more money and finance a hangar? We're already, we've already did that somewhere around one point two million dollars. We haven't got any money on that. We don't get the bond payments. We have to pay it. The taxpayers have to pay it. So let's be real about what we're discussing here. We're already making the payments on that hangar. A hangar that I feel like was built improperly. A hangar that's not completed and was not built to do what it's designed to do. To, to do. And the airport authority has put more money in it over the IBA. And now you're asking for us to put more money? We, we're making payments on a film studio, a water tower, 
and a hanger. They were voted on March 22, 2011. Had to be done that night because we had to have them. No water's been used out of the out of the water tower. The hangar's been a debacle. They said they could be built for 1.2. I don't know what they got in it. Over two million dollars is not complete. And you want more money to complete the hangar that you didn't build properly to begin with. And we won't even get with the film studio and you say, well, what does that have to do with the airport? Same people sit on those two boards. The taxpayers are paying all those bonds each and every year, but yet you're going to ask for more money to finish a project that was not done properly to begin with. And I'm not going to do that. I do support general aviation. Mr. Tibbetts and I have had quite a few conversations about what we could do out there. But when you talk about free money from somebody, a grant, $3 million for a project, and you want to dress it up and call it the technology part, you got to talk about the other side of the issue. And the other side of the issue is we have to have another $3 million to go with it. So if we're going to talk about it, let's talk about it. I'm not going to get into a whole lot more. It's crazy to think that somebody couldn't have done a, a deed transfer after October and November of 14 yeah. before we left off, okay. before the end of the uh, before all the commissioners left, I it. before the new people got in. Um, right here? No, in front. It only takes 15 minutes to do that deed only takes 30 seconds to sign it and it doesn't take that long to file so he had time to do it he did it on the last day because he didn't want to face the public and we were told not to do it yeah I just want to make one more comment when I first got elected I did sit down with Blake Swafford talked for over an hour, sat down with Brett Smith, talked for, gosh, two, three hours, I watched a presentation that he did on PowerPoint, sat down with uh, Mr. Uh, Tibbetts, and was very excited after talking to him, but uh, when I sat down with Brett Smith, he did offer me a free trip to New York, a free state dinner, and I declined it. He told me it'd be okay, he'd already done it for two other commissioners. I declined it. We would not do it. And to make one more thing clear, the meeting that Vernon was talking about was in June of 13. <laughs> June of 13 is when that retreat was held improperly. The contracts that were voted on and signed were October and November of 2012. You want to know why we're in this mess? I'll tell you why we're in this mess. There's a video of what happened when they voted on the Silver Common Agreement. There's no contract out there that says the Silver Common Agreement, folks. It's a lease. It's an airport use, terminal use agreement. <clears throat> Vote on what it is. Say what it is in public. You want to keep a somebody private, a private company private while you're working trying to get them here? I understand that. But you voted on something that was called the Silver Comet Agreement. And it was the airport use and lease agreement. And if somebody makes a motion for the Silver Comet Agreement, what are you thinking? Y'all just think about it. Come up with what you want to come up with. What if somebody had made a motion to approve the airport lease and term air, airport use and terminal lease agreement? 
That's a total different motion. You want to talk about why we're where we're at? We're where we're at because of that. So then I'll add something else to it. October and November of 2012. Those were signed. Elections were going on in 12. Nobody talked about anything. But they approved the Silver Comet Agreement. But today, all y'all know it is the airport lease, airport use and terminal lease agreement. I personally don't think they approved the right thing. I'm still looking for the Silver Comet Agreement. You can call it what you want. But time goes on, we go on a two day retreat in Douglasville, improperly. And time click, keeps clicking on. And then on Thursday night, October 3rd, 2013, Baldwin County finds out that somebody's signed a deal with a company. Y'all can think whatever you want about anything that's going on. I'm still scratching my head wondering why we voted on a silver common agreement in October and November of 12. And it took 12 months. 12 months. Just 12 months. Before they told me what it was. 12 months. Go back and look at the video. It was done improperly. There have been awards there, none. Reports from committees and departments. Ms. Ann Lippman, Community Development Director, on zoning application updates and business license updates. for having me um, again this month to give you an update. I'm actually going to update you on building permits and business licenses. Um, the building permits continue to go up every month. Um, they went up last, uh, this month, or in April. We had 607 building permits, so we have reached a total of 2,058 for the year. Um, wanted to focus in on single family detached. That also includes attached as well as um, non-residential new and additions. Um, we have a total of 555 single family permits for the year and we've had 56 non-residential. We have 13 in April and I want to focus on two of those. Two of those, um, if you are a shopper in Paulding County in Hiram, um, you issue permits for a Old Navy and a TJ Maxx. Um, also wanted to focus in on the, the single family permits that we issue and show you by coast. Um, post 4 continues to be the winner. You have about 40% of all the, not 40%, I'm sorry, 60% of all the permits that have been issued the past 10 years have been issued in Post 4. Um, this table shows that breakdown. Post 1, 2, and 3 are pretty much even on the permits. Um, but I did a, another diagram showing, going back to 2010, just showing the growth in single family permits. This goes all the way back to 2010 and shows a breakdown by post as well as shows all permits all together so you can see we're getting um, we did a little over 1500 last year I think this year um, we're going to see an increase but it's not going to be as big of a jump as we've seen in past years with single family um, moving on to our occupational tax certificates I always want to use this as an opportunity to remind everyone that it's not a business license it's not a license to do business it's a tax on the number of employees that you have in our county. And for 2018, we've issued 258 new business licenses, and I will make a note that, um, let's take Rite Aid, for instance. Rite Aid has been purchased by Walgreens, and when that purchase was done, they had to get a new business license. So it's not necessarily a new business. Um, generally, in our business license division estimates that probably about 15% of the new businesses are an existing business with a new owner. 
and just want to highlight this is the um, business licenses or occupational tax certificates we issued in 2018. Um, 46 of those were commercial and 233 were home occupations, which breaks down to 17% commercial and 83% um, commercial. So um, I hope this information is useful and I will look forward to bringing you something next month. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Under people wishing to speak on agenda items, uh, we have uh, Ms. Chris Byron. Um, I guess this is number three on the uh, on the airport uh, asset. Good morning. 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 I'd like to start off. Is this on? Can you? I would like to start off by saying thank you for giving the citizens the opportunity to learn the facts surrounding the county's airport loss lawsuits at the last board meeting. I appreciate that Chuck Connery presented the update because it assured me the information I was hearing was accurate, factual, which nowadays can never be assumed, as we all know. I also want to thank you for the information because I had rearranged my schedule that day to attend the meeting since discussion about the airport <coughs> lawsuits was on the agenda, which I was very interested in hearing. I, along with several other residents, were very disappointed to arrive and find out the discussion was taken off the agenda. I don't know the backstory as to why it was re removed, but it certainly came across during the meeting that Chairman Carmichael was the one who did so. I have to question why Mr. Carmichael attempted to keep the information from the citizens who are thirsting for knowledge about the lawsuits and why our tax dollars are being spent on them by removing the agenda item and then fighting to keep Mr. Connerly from giving us the facts. The resistance was offensive to me and others who simply wanted to know what was going on with the lawsuits. I'm just glad that the citizens eventually received the information especially since it's election time. I'll close by saying that I am in complete agreement with your decision to not drop the lawsuits or conflict counsel. It's frightening to think of what would happen to our county, tax dollars, and quality of life if they had been dismissed. Granted, I oppose the commercialization, but to leave the county exposed and vulnerable to Brett Smith and the city of Atlanta's lawsuits without legal representation is the most irresponsible move you could have made, regardless of anyone's commercialization stance. So, thank you for not throwing the county to the wolves. And I also thank you for not turning a blind eye to the unethical behavior surrounding commercialization by dropping your 139 lawsuit. I'm more than happy to spend my tax dollars fighting for my rights and defense against unlawful government. Gentlemen, I would like to add how sorry I am that such honorable men who have lived up to their 2014 campaign promises are being drawn through the mud during this campaign season for the sake of commercialization by certain individuals who have stooped to an all-time low. This bad behavior is transparent and shameful. Post commissioners, I appreciate all you have done and continue to do for Paulding County. You have my unwavering and continued support. Thank you. And we have Ms. Dana Sudan uh, on uh, business number three also. Thank you, gentlemen. Chairman Carmichael. I'm speaking from my heart today. I didn't come prepared because I didn't know about this being on the agenda, this blessing of the airport. It can be a blessing if it were to remain a general aviation airport um, that's being fought vigorously. And um, we have got people on our board who are doing the people's will, save one. Uh, I want to thank you gentlemen for standing up for us. Mr. Davis, Mr. Pownell, Mr. Crow, and my 
Commissioner, Mr. Vernon Collette. I appreciate everything you do, and I'm along with Chris Byron, but I'm willing to pay my taxes to fight this. I also wanted to use a side note with the best friends. Mr. Collette, as you may know, that I had a stray come up. His, he had named me Vernon after you. After further inspection, he is now Vernet. <laughs> but I do appreciate all you've done. I want you to continue the good fight, and, we'll, and we will stand behind you shoulder to shoulder. Thank you. Right, we get a name, name plate like change. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure you're still running. <laughs> Under the consent agenda, discuss action to uh, on one consent agenda item, which is to authorize the chairman to sign a quick claim deed to PR Acquisitions LLC uh, for 0.15 acres owned by the Pauley County Board of Commissioners in exchange for 0.33 acres of permanent easement owned by PR Acquisitions LLC along the Seven Hills Connector. And Mr. Jones is available, but. Um, is a consent agenda item, so would anyone like to move that for discussion with the regular? I, I don't necessarily need to move it, but I was asked about this, and I'm wondering if maybe George can just quickly explain what, what this is. Yes, sir. Essentially, there was some property that was subdivided from the old uh, Stonewood Creek subdivision. We bought the property to build the Seven Hills Connector. Once we transfer the property back, there were some swank remnants that were available. Um, these new subdivision owners had asked for that property. We agreed to do that in exchange for easement areas on the slopes that, you know, the road slopes down. So this was simply a way for them to uh, receive property that we didn't need necessarily, and also for us to gain property that we could use to maintain the roadway edges. Thank you. Okay, we'll leave it uh, on the consent agenda then and move on to old business, which uh, we have none. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. You still have number three on. Yeah. Well, we have to. Okay. Okay, you still on old business. Okay. Never mind. Well, there is no old business, so uh, new business number three is left. Discuss the fantastic asset and blessing of an airport. Um, and you know, I, I appreciate passionate citizens, and uh, and I was raised in a family. My dad was a different party from what I registered, and my uh, older sister with a PhD is a, a registered Democrat, and that's cool. That's great. Um, <clears throat> we, uh, I just wanted to make this as positive a meeting as we could possibly have. Um, but allowing to balance out the, the previous discussion, uh, this airport's seventy-eight million dollar investment by uh, primarily the feds, over ninety percent the feds and five percent towards the DOT. Uh, it's, it's in a beautiful, beautiful location, and similar to what Mr. Tibbetts summarized, uh, I just want to do something positive for our community, uh, revenue uh, source. Which my career's been in aviation, uh, both with Eastern. The Marine Corps with the, uh, the state of Georgia. And I've seen plenty of commercial airports across the nation, plenty of uh, general aviation airports, and uh, just want to pursue whatever we can be uh, out at uh, the Pauline County location uh, and work locked arms in order to make good things happen in the future. So. That's all I, I would say. Anybody else want to say anything about the blessing of airport? Yeah, I think it'd be a great blessing. I'd love to see an airport that's like Charlie Brown or McCullum, East Treaty Camp. I think it'd be a, a huge blessing for the camp. I think this board as a whole stands and uh, all of us post commissioners, I know, say that, listen, we're, we're all for general aviation airport. We're, we're simply not supporting or commercializing the airport. So, uh, 
anybody need any clarification on that? And I'm sorry for that, but we've all made it plain that we feel like it could be a great asset to the county as a general aviation area. Okay, that's the conclusion of our regular business. Uh, just a second. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm out. I hesitate to uh, hang on just a minute. While they're debating, I mean, we always get a scripture up here from somebody. I guess it's okay me to say this. It's cast your burdens on the Lord. He shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. Psalms 55, 22. Uh, Deidre from our election office, she always gives us a word of encouragement. And I want to tell her once again, thank you. Get over. Speak up, please. Nobody can hear us. Yeah. I rejected that bill on purpose, didn't you? <laughs> no, I'm sure you didn't. Um, we've had a lot of discussion here. Um, and I, I, I wish this airport would be a blessing, day. Eh? I wish that. I wish that this community could embrace what's going on out there, or what should be going on out there. You know, I, I, I worked for several years right around the corner from McCollum. I've seen firsthand what, a, what an airport can do in a community, and, and, and working for a company that was right there that used that airport, um, I've seen it. I've seen it with my own eyes, but I, I know what it can do. Um, find it a little humorous to say you wanted this to be a positive meeting after the phone call you and I had yesterday, but knowing that this was going to not be a positive meeting, um, continued on with plans, and I'm disappointed in that. I got a phone call this morning that said you had this item number three early this morning, and I said, oh good, good, Dave, Dave, um, Dave had a change of heart. And stir up controversy and, and, and wants to discuss it. Because as I said, if you want to get up here and talk about your side of the issue, I'd, I'd sit back and let you do it. I'd, I encourage you to do it last time. Because um, as a member of the airport authority and then as a member of this board and then again as a member of this board in another, another capacity and also a member of the airport authority again, yeah, I think that you would be qualified to give your side of the story, and, and um, would you? my hopes were shot when I came back in and saw that um, you decided to move on as planned. So I, I wish this could be a, a positive meeting, and um, I, I don't like the contention, and I don't like the fighting, and I don't like the stirring up of things. Um, but I understand you wanted the other side to be heard. And I hope that this airport will be a blessing and that we can get to a point where the airport is um, used by companies in our community to be able to improve their businesses and, and, um, and grow their business and, 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 and be successful. And I'm gonna to continue to continue to work towards that way and I'll learn. and I hope that you'll join in that. Hey, thank you, Ronnie. Anyone else? Okay, that's the conclusion of our regular business. We uh, do have executive sessions scheduled. However, we have uh, public participation on non-agenda items. I'd entertain a motion to allow Mr. Morris to um, speak on his concerns regarding the, the last meeting. I'll make a motion and I second it. Motion by Commissioner Collette. 
and seconded by Commissioner Pownell. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 5 0. Uh, Mr. Tommy Morsi on the floor. Good morning, Commissioner. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. One of the things I had planned to talk about has already been covered in the meeting today, but I'm going to limit my comments to the April 24th meeting and some concerns I had from that meeting. I would not be here today on a non agenda item had I had a chance to sign up for this agenda item that she did on April 24th about dropping the lawsuit and also about the history of the airport. I could not sign up because that was decided once you started your meeting. So I'm happy to be here today to talk about some of my concerns. I was happy originally that we didn't have anything on the agenda to talk about the airport. I think a lot of people in this county are sick and tired of hearing all the divisive comments about what's going on in the airport. It's already been said, we have the lawsuits that are pending. It's going to be a while before they're settled in all probability, so we keep beating it to death. What I want to hear, and I think many others want to hear, what is the board doing to bring new business, to deal with infrastructure, to get new jobs in this county, and to provide property tax release, relief? This is what I was thinking about as we were talking about on the 24th when I was here. And that's what I want to hear more about what this commission, this board of commissioners is doing. I want you to be united in seeking ways that we can get more businesses, more jobs, that we can keep so many people from Baldwin County having to travel outside this county to work. You know, I, and I, like I said, I was happy it wasn't on the agenda, and then all of a sudden, Commissioner Collette brings us up. And so I thought, here we go again. We're gonna be talking about the airport, We'll probably have a, some conflicts in here as we go through here. And I'm not going to go through everything that was there and said that day. People can look at the video. And I think it's wonderful that residents to have a chance to look at that video and see what really happened and make their own conclusions, come to their own conclusions about who said what and how it was handled. But, you know, and when we're talking about these, these things, and I, I want to talk some procedural issues here. And if I'm off base, I'm sure Ms. Skipper will correct me on this. But the first thing that came up, uh, Commissioner Collette, you said you wanted to have an, you wanted to have a new business item about dropping all the lawsuits, correct? And so that, that passed by up. And then the next thing you wanted to amend it to include the history. And that passed 401, as I recall. What was interesting is when you were when the board <coughs> was talking about this, I heard it mentioned it was under provisions of emergency and urgent necessity. So I went back later and looked at the code, which is 2.56 in your administration code. That applies to issues that have come up and you have dealt with prior to the start of the commission meeting, if I read it correctly. The next part of it deals with after the meeting starts, it has to be something that's of immediate need to bring it up and add an agenda item during that meeting. So then the question becomes, was it really an immediate need? Ms. Uh, Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Davis had made some comment, and, and I hope I've gotten this correct. I looked at the video several times. I understood you to say that you had met, you, you guys had met that morning about 7 o'clock to talk about an agenda. I thought that's what was on the video. If I'm wrong, I'll stand correct. But my only thought was if there was some kind of meeting to talk about the agenda that morning, was there a quorum? And again, going back to this section 2-56A, it has to be an open meeting if there's a quorum to discuss the agenda. I'm just bringing it up. I don't know, I don't know the answer to that. I'm just asking that question. And I don't, I don't believe that that's what he said. I don't believe that's what he said. Okay. The, um, I, I would invite everyone to look at the video and see what was actually said. Now, what I've said or anyone else, just look at the video. One of the things that came up, should there be a delay until today, so that the airport authority could be here to also present their case about the history. Not about the lawsuit so much, but about the history. And that was decided it would not happen that way. 
My question is, as a resident, why couldn't we wait two weeks and have this meeting today and hear both sides of it? I think both sides need to be heard in this whole dispute that we've been talking about for about five years now. And, and I kept, as we went into the discussion, it was lengthy, I, I'll have to admit I was somewhat shocked when Commissioner Collette at the one hour and 50, point, 50 minute mark, approximately, he stated, this is an election. If two of the three of us get beat by people who want a commercial airport, you will have agreement between two groups and have a commercial airport. Now, I'm really wondering, oh, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Mr. Morris. I know what you're talking about. I can understand why you're saying that, but it was never my intent. My intent was simply to stop the misinformation that was being put out there about the 1051, bringing a complete stop to the uh, commercialization. And we can all tell that's not happening. So, thank you. I would uh, like to ask for a two minute extension. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve and uh, second to extend for two minutes. We have any discussion that we haven't voted. So the discussion is, that's one thing, Mr. Morris, that I've fought for for the seven years that I've been here is to make sure that citizen, citizens have a right to speak in our meetings. And I'll always support that. That's my discussion. I also, I also plead that if somebody has something to say and they involve it, they need to be in the finish. Amen. <clears throat> Certainly agree. I just wanted one of the post commissioners to bring it up. So all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Looks like here's my vote. Okay, thank you. I would like for all of you to consider when you make comments in the meeting and you make general comments about most of the money has been spent defending the county or most of the money has been spent on something else. I would like to see a full accounting of how much money has been spent on each of the lawsuits we're talking about. It may be out there, but I haven't seen it. So I would like you to do that when you're talking in generalities. I'd also like I understand that the county cannot drop the lawsuit based on what Mr. Connolly said. But some of the, or at least that's what he was saying in the meeting. That it would be, it would leave you at risk if you started dropping the lawsuits. My question, if the county had not filed the declaratory action and the subsequent suit against the airport authority in Silver Comet, would you be facing the possible problems with 20 to $35 million, I believe the commissioner Powell mentioned that you could be facing if you lost the lawsuit against Silver Tommy, as I understood it. Commissioner Davis mentioned uh, airport and general airport, general aviation, and all of you have said the same thing. My question, if I'm a new business owner and wanting to come into Paulby County and maybe relocate the airport, do I have the full support of the commissioners? Do I have the full support of this community? Do, do I see all the negative comments that have been written about the fighting here in this county. And and my guess is I probably wouldn't want to come in here, especially if my your competitor in some other location said, you know, why do you want to go there where they're having all these problems? The commission's fighting, airport authorities fighting, everybody's fighting. So why don't you come on over here to my county? We don't have that kind of problem. And the last thing I'll say, I will continue to care and work for this county, regardless of what the election results are, and I hope others do as well, and I ask you to commit to doing as much for bringing new business into this county as you have committed to being opposed to commercialization of the airport. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. I'd like to make a comment. Um, it's often said that you point to the commissioners up here that why aren't you bringing in new business? We have an IBA, we have an economic development director, we have a chamber of commerce. These are the people that bring businesses to the county. We as a commission board are trying to make it, or we should make it, as business friendly as possible. And uh, you hear a lot of remarks made about different businesses here in the county that's, that's not being put in place, ones in the city here, that we have absolutely nothing to do with that. But yet, there'll be a lot of money thrown against Walsh and the commission are holding us up. We're not holding the thing, we're holding uh, Sometimes people don't want to comply and it slows things down. But Frank Baker has made an honest effort since he's taken his position to make it easier. We're working on it. Uh, but the Board of Commissioners 
we can't run out and look all over the country and beg somebody to come here. If I, if I knew somebody that I thought I could put a hook in and bring them here, I promise you I would. And uh, when I'm going to challenge y'all to do something. When you go to doctor's offices in different places, just ask them very gently. Do you, do you live in this county? I have found about 85% of people that's filling their doctor bills. They come to other counties. It's the nature of the beast. When you get a job in Pawnee County, if you live in Gwinnett, guess what? You drive over here and vice versa. So we keep beating this dead horse. Look, we don't have jobs in the county. Uh, I'd venture to say that most of us that were raised here in this county worked outside this county somewhere. And the reason we did, it was to provide for our families, to make a living. And we didn't complain and whine about we didn't have a job here. We was glad to get a job anywhere we could. So, you, you know, you can beat this board up all you want and say, look, you've got an anti-business. That's not true. I'm very supportive of any business. And if you look at my voting record, when it comes to small businesses here in the county, I support it. Dave, Mr. Morris mentioned you by name. So I want to, I want to make two comments, Mr. Morris. Back. I can see you. Okay. Uh, the first is regarding quorum. Um, the open meetings laws of the state of Georgia um, and, and the, 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 the laws that we operate under here involving three of us, a quorum being three of us, uh, we can't gather to do county business. And I assure you that's not happened. Um, the, the, we take that to an extreme because the way the laws are written, we can get together and have dinner, and we can go to a Braves game, and we can we can socialize uh, together if we choose to. Todd and, and Brennan and Tony were all personal friends of mine before any of us became became commissioners, and so there's a friendship there that um, sometimes a little bit of the friendship gets put on hold because if I just show up at Tony's house to say hi, Brennan might be there, for example, and so we. we we take that very serious to the extent that on Tuesdays when we have commission meetings, there's a hallway that runs down the back side of this wall here. If I turn the corner and I'm walking down to maybe speak to Frank or Rebecca down at this end of the hall, and Tony and Vernon are standing here, and I'm walking through them, I don't even acknowledge that they're there, and they don't even acknowledge that I've not even good morning, straight by without a word. Um, another example of that is I had a 40th birthday party last year. These three post commissioners were at the party, but it was taken so seriously that only one of them came at a time when we had somebody who was on the phone that said, okay, Tony left. When you get here, it'll be okay. We, even though that was a social issue that had absolutely nothing to do with county business, we don't put three of us together. It is common, on, on, especially on Monday night before a meeting and Tuesday morning of a meeting, that I'll have a conversation uh, meeting, if you will, with Todd, to say, uh, like for instance, this morning, um, new business item number three got added last minute. I spoke with Vernon in the hallway about that. That, by the, uh, dictionary definition, a meeting of two people, yes, but um, by Georgia law, a meeting, being an open meeting quorum of this board, did not take place. Uh, and, it, and it will not take place. Um, the other issue you mentioned was regarding adding agenda item being immediate need. Um, and Lonnie, would you speak, I'm going to let Lonnie speak to this because she's, she's the attorney, she's more, more well versed in this than I am for sure. I, didn't, I don't have the same law degree she has. But um, the, the, the immediate need there was created by the fact that Mr. Carmichael removed what would have been asked to be added on. It doesn't necessarily require an, an urgency where something bad will happen. We have to act now. The board can determine that there is a need to add it. And I'll let Lonnie um, speak to that if you would, please. You mind if I clarify something on that, Roman? Um, I'll, okay. The, uh, as I said at the last meeting, the request came in through our county clerk, Ms. Meredith, to add it. And I gave the benefit of the doubt that it would be something that I would like for us to see us discuss. So this um, there put it on the schedule and then when I saw what it was about, I did not want to put it on the agenda. But I, I'm required or we're supposed to hear from three majority 
and I only heard from Vernon, so that was definitely not a majority. If you don't mind me reading it, this is what I also read last meeting. In the event of an emergency or urgent necessity, the agenda may be amended or altered. That's what I heard. Okay, as I, 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 I made the statement that you had removed it from the uh, agenda. I, I didn't, um, I don't believe I spoke to your intent. I certainly didn't imply, I certainly didn't mean to imply that uh, any of your intent. I was just stating the fact that it was on the agenda and you made the decision to move it off. And then in this meeting, a majority of the commissioners found the need to re-add it and the need was created because you had removed it. Your, your intention there is irrelevant. Uh, Lonnie, would you please um, clarify that? I can, and I've actually issued a couple of memos on this. Um, one was issued in 2016, it was the same question, and it was issued by myself and Mr. Phillips um, with Tally Richardson and Cable, and it was basically asking the same question about how you can add something to an agenda. Um, the Open Meetings Act directly addresses it and says that you can add an item to the agenda, uh, it says specifically failure to include on the agenda an item which becomes necessary to address during the course of the meeting should not preclude considering and acting upon such item. Um, our ordinance has the language about it being, um, can be amended or altered after the proposed work session agenda has been provided to the board at any time prior to the board of commissioners meeting and that a new subject requires immediate attention may be added to the agenda during a meeting by a majority vote of the board. Um, so we have some of that. The urgent necessity um, issue, there is a case on it in Georgia. It's Lancaster versus Effingham County, and it says that a, what is deemed necessary by a county government is within the purview of that legislative body, and they can choose what is necessary or not necessary. Um, so if you deem it to be necessary, you deem it as something that needs to be dealt with, you have the right as a legislative body to make that decision. And that's essentially what these, these two opinions that I've actually issued in 2016 and 2018 now both say. Thank you. Um, we need to have Mr. Connerly say a, a couple of words. Well, it's not on the agenda, so uh, well, we're going to closed session. I'd like to make a motion then that we allow Mr. Connolly a few minutes just to say a couple of words if he would like to. That's my motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, is there any discussion? Uh, the uh, Again, it's it's not on the agenda. It's in me, another one of those things like Mr. Morris brought up that uh, I deem it necessary. If you, if you deem it necessary, <laughs> so okay. Not you. so since we're in discussion of it, if somebody would have taken the time to make some calls last meeting, you wouldn't have pulled what you pulled off, which in return would allow Mr. Morris to speak on agenda item because it would have been on the agenda before the meeting. And it would not have caused us to have to find it necessary to put it back on there. Just like when I came in and I realized this morning that we're going to discuss the fantastic asset and blessing of the airport. I didn't fuss about it. It's on there. You put it there. But I didn't know about it until I saw it. So I'd like to give Mr. Connerly the opportunity to speak if he would like to. So I would like to ask for the vote. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, uh, Any opposed? Nay. Nay. It's been a while since I've been deemed necessary, but uh, I'm, I'm going to take that as a compliment. Um, I'll only take a few minutes. I, I didn't have the benefit of hearing everything Mr. Tibbetts had to say, but I think I get the gist of it, which is we're still part of this discussion about why we have this ongoing litigation. Um, so I want to come back to that point again. Um, and I'm not going to go through the entire history at the airport. Most people in the room already know it. Um, I just want to point out a couple of things that got us where we are today. The airport authority entered a contract with Silver Comet 
that Calding County is not a party to. Blake Swalford signed a Part 139 application to bring commercial service to the Paulding County Airport without Paulding County's consent and approval. Resolution 1501 was this board's statement to the FAA that it did not support the commercialization of the airport and that it wanted the Part 139 application to be withdrawn. The next thing that happened is the Airport Authority sent a letter to the FAA that said, no matter what you hear from Pauling County, we want you to move forward with that Part 139 application. And I will submit to this board that that one moment in time is the reason that I'm here. That one moment in time is why this county and the Airport Authority have incurred all of the legal expenses that they've incurred. It's because the Airport Authority says, we don't care what Pauling County says, FAA. We want you to move forward with that 139 application. We filed the lawsuit, not just to challenge Blake Swafford's authority to sign the Part 139 application. We filed the lawsuit asking the court to determine whether the airport authority could move forward with the commercialization of that airport without this county's consent regardless of who signed the application. Whether Blake Swafford signed it, Terry Tibbetts signed it, doesn't matter. And we filed it because the airport authority told the FAA, we want you to move forward with your consideration of that application. In other words, we want commercial service brought to that airport. Now, if you think commercial service at that airport is a dead issue, let me just disabuse you of that notion. I was in court Tuesday on appellate arguments in related cases to this lawsuit in which the attorney for Silver Comet stood up and the first words out of his mouth were, we, commercialization of that airport is not a dead issue. We intend to move forward with bringing commercial service to Paulding County. So if, if commercial service is a dead issue, somebody needs to, to tell Silver Comet because they certainly plan on it. Now, the FAA has told us in writing that they consider the Part 139 application to be pending. And it will remain pending until the litigation is resolved. That is the FAA's official position on this as communicated to us. So if we dismiss our lawsuit, asking the court to declare, as between the county and the airport authority, who has the right to move forward with this Part 139 application, if we dismiss that lawsuit, that opens the door for the FAA to move forward with its consideration of the 139 application. And as Silver Comet said a week ago, that's exactly what they want. Now, this letter that Terry mentions that came later on had nothing to do with the 139 application, had nothing to do with the FAA's treating that as an open issue. It was in the context, if you recall, of the demand by the FAA that we come up with a joint corrective action plan. And why did we have to come up with a joint corrective action plan? We had to come up with a joint corrective action plan because the airport authority went to David Austin two days before he left office and had him sign a quick claim deed for 163 acres of airport property. Despite what? Despite the fact that the FAA had said, don't do it unless both parties consent to it. But they went ahead and they did it anyway. We don't even learn of that until February when David Austin's deposition is taken in the context of this litigation. Learning that, I sent a letter to the airport authority's attorney, and I said that quick claim deed was signed without authorization by Pawnee County, and also signed despite the fact that the FAA had told the airport authority, we, we do not want anything to happen with that airport property without the consent of both parties. I sent the Pawnee County Airport Authority attorney a letter and demanded the return of that deed. What did they do? Not only did they not return it, they went out and recorded the deed. So it was at that point that I had to communicate to the FAA 
Despite your instructions to everybody to the contrary, the airport authority has gone out, had the outgoing chairman sign this deed, now they've recorded it, and now, according to UFAA, we're at risk of being in violation of these grant assurances. It was the FAA that then said, you and the airport authority have to cooperate to come up with this joint corrective action plan. We had letters going back and forth to the FAA, at which point the FAA said, we want you both communicating to us jointly about the joint corrective action plan. It had nothing whatsoever to do with the Part 139 application. They only wanted to hear from us jointly in the context of the joint corrective action plan. I say all that to say that as far as I know, sitting here right here today it is still the FAA's position that that part 139 application remains pending and it remains pending until this litigation is resolved and not a week ago Silver Comet's attorneys say they intend to move forward with commercial service at that airport and it is not a dead issue so that's why these lawsuits remain pending is because the airport authority sent that communication to the FAA and said, we want you to move forward with the 139 application, no matter what position the county takes in all of this. And that's how we got here today. Thank you. I'd like to make a comment. This goes back to when I sat down with Brett Smith and I watched his PowerPoint presentation. I thought it was an interesting presentation. I asked him, I said, you know, there's one slide in there that caught my attention. Can you go back to it? And, uh, and can I have the presentation? And he did email me the presentation, so I have it. And one slide was this slide right here, and I'll give it to anybody who wants to see it. This was his dream of the Pollen County Airport. And when I looked at this slide, I see all these general aviation businesses on it. And I was impressed. And I said, Brett, I can go for this. I'll support you 100% on this. I said, because there's no commercial on this slide. I said, why is there no commercial on this slide? He said, because he didn't care about commercial. Commercial had nothing to do with it. I said, well, commercial has nothing to do with it. You don't care about it. Why are you doing this to our county? I'll support you on this. Just back off of 139. Your contract doesn't say you have to have a 139. It says you'll support general innovation as much as you'll support commercial. And I kept asking him, and he wasn't answering me. And I kept on and kept on. And finally, defiantly, he told me, I want the million dollars that goes with the 139. Hmm. But the original thing here, no commercial, and I'll give it to everybody who wants it. He doesn't get the million dollars, the airport, and or it's maintenance. It's, 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 it's has to be spent back on the airport. I understand that. Right. He just yeah, gets he, to tell he, you he what it's spent. That because he couldn't afford to handle that airport by himself. That 139 is imperative for him to have the money to function and work that airport because he don't have the money to do it, I don't believe. And there's another question I like to throw out there. Why? Why? As certain people fought so hard to commercialize this airport. I'll sit here at one of these meetings we were having, and I don't know if I'm right or if I'm wrong, I can't find out. Who in the world has invested in this airport in this county? Just a little food for thought. Why are certain people fighting so hard? I certainly am not getting anything out of this. I'm just representing the people of this county. That's my job. Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. I don't know if y'all I'm all about freedom of speech. I don't care. So would y'all please vote on it? I, I just have a question. <coughs> uh, without being on the agenda or sign up to speak, uh, Ms. McNichol, I just can't you know, turn the meeting into a public hearing. That's fine. I'll be glad to talk to you after if you get something you'd like to say to me. Thank you. Okay, well, I'm going to proceed with the uh, agenda, and um, I, I respect every citizen's in here to, to speak, and uh, I just want to try to keep better control of the parliamentary procedures. So, uh, all right, so uh, we that's the conclusion of regular business. We've heard from our Citizen wishing to speak on the non-agenda items. I'll entertain a motion to go into executive session for personnel. I'd like to make a motion to go into executive session for personnel, but I'd like to also add pending and potential litigation to that motion. I'll say motion 
Commissioner Pownell, seconded by Commissioner Davis. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 5-0 and we are adjourned in the executive session. We will uh, call the regular session uh, back to order and report that uh, no action was taken in the uh, closed session and uh, entertain a motion for additional personnel. I will uh, I'll make a motion that we add to the this afternoon's agenda uh, for executive session for personnel. I'll second that. Motion by Commissioner Pownell, second by Commissioner Davis. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries 5-0. I would uh, like to make a motion that we adjourn, and we will probably be back in 10 minutes for the next meeting. Our uh, clerk has got a few more things to tie together. We will give you ample time to be able to get a correct agenda out for the, what was the 2 o'clock, so uh, let's uh, call it around 2 40. <coughs> we'll uh, reconvene. At this time, we'll take a, a motion to adjourn the regular session. I'll make a motion if we adjourn. Motion by Christian Pump. <coughs> second. Second by Christian Clay. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Curious Bible. We'll be back in 10 minutes. <laughs>